not sergeant at arms today, but that'll be two bucks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Today's invocation will be with Pat. If we we'll bow our heads, please. Uh, Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather here today and celebrate our members who are having anniversaries this month. Uh, thank you for allowing our, Kath our speaker, Catherine, to safely travel to our state today. And please bless this uh, meal that we've been able to share today. Amen. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please join us in the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And today's song is with the wonderful, amazing singer, Christina Trader. <laughs> You're funny. Um, today we will be singing in honor of Camp Rotary, the ants go marching on. There are pieces of paper with the lyrics. We will only be singing the first five verses. Maybe four. Let's do four. The ants go marching on. One. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah. Hurrah. down to the ground to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. Two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two. The little one stops to tie his shoe and they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. The ants go marching two by three, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching three by three, the little one stops to climb the tree. They all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. The ants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching four by four, the little one stops to shut the door. And they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. Great. We'll call it good. Yeah. So you may be seated. So funny story. So someone tell me, because I can never remember, what is the nine? What is number nine? They stop to do what? What? Shout the end. Is that what it says? Time. So I can never remember all the words. So when the kids were little, I would make up, you know, the ants go, because we're on long, long car trips. And that one was always... Um, they'll stop to drink some wine. And so that's what my kids think that is. So I'm a great parent. So you're welcome. Um, besides our program today, do we have any visiting Rotarians? All right. Do we have any guests of Rotarians? Steve Dahl. Yeah, today I brought uh, Ian Faley from Boys and Girls Club. Welcome, Ian. <laughs> And Miriam. Hello, everybody. I brought with me our superintendent of the day. This is um, Tiffany Spaeth. She is a senior at State Street High School, was nominated by the staff of State Street to participate in the superintendent of the day program, which is a leadership program for students for her leadership and um, academic performance at State Street High School. Welcome, Tess. All right. So first off, I want to congratulate um, Mark Nielsen and Chuck Rule um, for being selected for the Cedar Woolley School District Hall of Fame for next week. Um, yes. That 
is next Thursday, the 22nd. It starts at 530 in the high school auditorium. So please mark your calendars because I know um, there's quite a few recipients in our club um, from over the years and it's always a great time and there's dessert. So if you need some motivation to get there, we'll have some delicious desserts for afterwards. Um, I'm leaving this afternoon to attend the Rotary Northwest president elect training with 625 of my closest friends down in Seattle. Um, th that is Idaho, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska president elects for 24, 25. So I'm excited to learn and bring back anything I can to the club. Um, let's see, February 24th, remember that date change for the Helping Hands um, Saturday service opportunity from 11 to 1. February 27th, Ladies of Rotary, can't wait to see you wherever we decide to meet this month. Um, February 29th, 5th Thursday, it will be an evening meeting, and we'll get you more details as soon as we figure those out. Sheena. And the board meeting, we delayed the board meeting to this next Tuesday because we've had some illness going through our club. So um, in order not to pass it along to anyone else, we uh, delayed it to this next Tuesday night. And that's going to be 5.30. And um, Janicky wasn't available, so we're going to meet at the Cedar Rolly School Board Conference Room on Trail Road at 5.30. And if you are a board member, park in the back and come in the back door. All right. Um, March 2nd, Lynn, Julia, and I will be going to the District 5050 Grants Seminar in Ferndale. May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Today is the final day to register for $100 per person or $200 for a family. So if you think you might be going, save yourself a few bucks and sign up today. It's through the, if you Google District 5050 and look under events, um, you can find it um, under the events on the district website. May 10th is Camp Rotary. Um, we have less than three months now. Um, each Rotarian should be bringing in at least three silent auction items, gift baskets, gift certificates, whatever you can think of that you think would sell. Um, and as you probably saw in the email from this morning that I sent out, um, the auction committee, we're trying to make some big changes. Um, we want to put the fun back into fundraising. That's our big goal. Um, we had a really great discussion this week, um, and we know there's a lot of folks who've stopped coming to our auction over the years because of the length and um, of the live auction itself. And so our goal this year is to cut back and to only sell the items that make the biggest bang for our buck in the live auction, and the others will go in the um, almost live. Um, we know that's a big decision, but we are trying to put some fun back into the night for Rotarians as well. Um, so Becky Scrindy, who, as I said last week, has so graciously agreed to be the live auction procurement chair, she's actually going through um, with Danny and looking at past auction items, and, and we're seeing how much the club, how much the individuals have invested, and then what's the return on investment for those, because if the club is spending, the club and the individual is spending, say, 4000 and we're only selling the item for 4000 it's really, is it, is it worth it? So we've got to really look at those items and make sure that we're doing the right thing. Right now we're spending a lot of money um, on the auction, on the venue at the museum. Um, I, I believe in full transparency for the club. You'll see that in the notes and stuff that you'll receive um, because I, I just want everyone to know what we're doing. So for the venue at the museum this year, the prices have raised every single year since we started going there. This year, they're 8,900. I would have no doubt that they're going to be probably 10,000 before too long there. Um, from what we understand, if we go to the Swinomish Casino, they have a very, very low rate um, for nonprofits. So we're going to be investigating that. Sure, it might hold less people, but it's okay because last year we spent I believe, Steve, around 72000 on the auction. That's a lot of money that could be spent toward projects if we can find a way to do it for less. So that's our goal is we're going to really dive into the details and try to be responsible with our sponsors' money and for the money that the tickets bring in so we can get the biggest bang for our buck. Um, so 
in your email, you'll see the, the minutes. I'm not going to read everything out loud because no one wants that. Um, but please know that the next auction meeting is in that at the very bottom of the email. It's by Zoom. And we would really welcome all of you to attend. Um, the more people, the better. I know quite a few people um, haven't been volunteering as much in the past few years, and we want to change that. We really do want it to be fun. And I run a very efficient meeting. We were out in 45 minutes um, the past two meetings, and that's our goal. We get through a lot of business, and we do it quickly and efficiently. June 28th is the installation dinner here at the community center. And I know it's in the works as far as planning goes. Is there any other club business or announcements before we move into anniversaries with Yulia? All right, Yulia. And it's Valentine's season, of course. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and happy Valentine's season. We have very special couples. We have four in the month of February. Dan and Sherry Hockett on February 12th, and Kristen and Laura Schaffner uh, on February 19th. And we have two couples represented today, and we're going to start with Becky Scranton. My husband's in senior role, working on tractors, and he just couldn't pull himself away. Um, but we've ma been married three years, going on 30 is what it feels like. And, well, we got married a week before COVID. Yeah, our whole marriage has been COVID. Um, and it's awesome. So, three years. Woo! Woo Thank you so much. Chris and Tina, and Chris probably has something to say. Yeah, thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, my lovely bride, Tina, and I have been together uh, 34 years next week. We have five offspring. We've been uh, able to marry off two of them. We got a third one getting married next year. But the best news is we got our first grandbaby on the way later this year. Yay. So. <laughs> Happy anniversary to the special couples. All right, now we have a raffle. All righty, first number. Sixty six zero. Six John pays 50. Past presidents paid $2 each. Let's see here. Uh, who can we have collect? Todd, can you help me out by collecting money, please? Thank you. So, Todd, when you get the privilege of picking up money, oh. um, so you get to go around and, and uh, collect the, the dues from everyone's fines. Uh, 53, 5 3. Mark. Winner sings a song, tells a joke, or pays two bucks. I'll tell a joke. Guy's driving down the road out in the middle of nowhere by himself, and he sees this guy walking on the road, and not uh, nobody around, and it's getting going to get hot out that day, and it's no no cities for a long way. So he pulls over and says, "Hey, would you like a ride?" The guy goes, "Great, yeah, thanks." Climbs in. We're driving down the road, chit chatting back and forth. Pretty soon the the driver, the passenger says, hey, do you uh, pick up people often? The driver goes, oh, once in a while. And the passenger says, well, don't you get a little nervous about doing that? The driver says, no, I don't get nervous about that. And he goes, why? He says, well, 
Bash says, well, what about, uh, you know, what if I was a serial killer? I mean, you know, it could be dangerous. The guy laughs, the driver laughs a little bit, and he says, what's so funny? He says, I'm not worried about you being a serial killer. And the pastor says, why not? And he goes, because the odds of two serial killers being in the same car is almost non-existent. <laughs> Eleven, one, one, sticks. Chuck. Not a coog or a husky paid two dollars each. Ouch. Right? And the last number. Forty nine, four nine. Guys or gals, winner chooses which group will pay two dollars each. Gentlemen, you didn't. Oh, that's the okay. Ruling from the president: Does the winner or the substitute get to pick? I'm the proxy. Guys are paying two. You know, Bill. I knew there was a reason you were my favorite. Thank you. Is that it? All right, let's move on to Sergeant at Arms. Okay, uh, well, it's going to be really expensive. If you have not turned in at least one auction item yet, please pay a dollar. And then in honor of Camp Rotary, we have Camping Trivia. Okay, so this table. What was the catalyst for the widespread popularity in camping? Splendor of Nature. Affordability of the automobile or expense in hotels. Splendor of nature. What's the table's answer? Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> automobile or nature? Automobile is correct. Nice job. What happened in the 1920s to make people miss nature? A wave of people that moved to urban areas, a wave of people that moved to rural areas, or the number of small farms that surged? Yep. That is not correct. It was a wave of people that moved to urban areas. Everybody pay a dollar. <laughs> what was the name of for the first organized campers? Nature lovers, tin can tourists, or tent dwellers? Tent, tent dwellers is not correct. It is tin can tourists. Everybody pay a dollar. Not correct. Ten dollars for you. What famous inventor was a camping enthusiast? Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, or both? Both is correct. Okay, last one. What happened to road development in the 30s and 40s? Development of highways, roads deteriorated, or more rest areas? Highways is correct. 
Congratulations. I feel like there should be a lot of happy bucks. Happy bucks. Anyone happy? Thank you. I have a happy five. And um, so with Chris Johnson here, I'd really like to make this announcement. And also I see our chief is online, but um, the Peace Health Community Health Council approved $200,000 grant for a joint mobile integrated health program, MIHP, between C.J. Woolley and Burlington. And the beauty of this is that um, for those individuals which are high utilizers, in other words, they don't really have um, emergent needs, but they call all the time with this uh, mobile health uh, integrated service, they will still get the services that they need, but we won't be uh, it won't cost the cities and actually the community a lot of money to provide that service. So many, many thanks to Peace Health for that. It's a great, it's going to be a great program and it's to you. Thank you. Boy, I have five happy bucks. Today in the mail, I got delivery of the rodentator. I've been trying to kill these moles at my house for Two and a half years. Well, I'm getting serious. A mixture of 40 PSI oxygen and 5 PSI propane with an igniter is going to kill them. <laughs> Carl's on a terrorist watch list now. Um, I have a uh, 20 bucks because my youngest daughter, Bridget, had a baby boy on Tuesday, which happened to be my birthday. And these kids are so coordinated that Katie's birthday, we had our other grandson. And so all the coordination to make that happen, these kids are something else. So thank you very much. All right, I got a happy five. This is kind of funny, but I did actually get the best Valentine's Day gift ever yesterday from my ex. I got a huge bag of unmatched socks from his house, and it's amazing. Well, while my husband is getting so excited about all that battle with the moles, Mine is a lot more peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> so we have uh, the first birthday. I'm, I'm, I haven't even learned to talk about this yet. The first birthday for our granddaughter coming up on the 19th. And she's just absolutely a, a full of joy. And they're going through learning how to deal with daycare. And so apparently she's a star there. So happy bucks for Maya. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, Maggie. Maggie, do you have something you want to share? Maggie? Yes, yes. Sorry, it took a while to find the unmute button. Um, I am doing a happy 13th, uh, $13, because as my father said, uh, February 13th is a big day in our life. It's my dad's birthday and my boyfriend's birthday. And then we just welcomed John Walter on that day too. So February 13th is exciting for our family. Thank you. Any last happy bucks? Final call. Sold. Right. Awesome. Thanks, Christina. I appreciate it. And um, good luck, Carl. I feel like you need it. <laughs> and well, and the ironic part is, is I'm sitting here and you're discussing this and, you know, Carl is trying to put together um, a camping package for um, the Rotary um, auction. And I'm just imagining the destruction that he's going to do to his beautiful, he was showing me photos last week of his beautiful 16 acres and the cabins. And, and I, now I'm just like, is it really going to look like that after this? I'm not quite sure. So maybe we should adjust those photos after, after the destruction of the moles. Um, early leavers, um, just a reminder, you need to pay the Sergeant Arms $2 for your privilege of your early exit. And um, right now I'm going to call Carl up for a duo of reasons. All right. 
Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. I'm excited and honored to introduce our speaker today. And um, before we do that, I need Chris Johnson come to come up. We have a special a special presentation that we want to also give give. It, so we're kind of doing two things at once here. Uh, the, the, I'll let the cat out of the bag here. This is Kathleen Catherine Turner. She's from the um, Baja Mar Club in the Gulf of Mexico, or on the skinny part. And Chris is in the Paul Harris Fellow group in our club. And we're going to uh, sort of award, we're going to award one today, but we don't have the actual award. But because she's here uh, and she has something to do with it, we want to uh, let her tell us about that. Go ahead. Yes. So before I do my speech, foundation is something that matters to me. I'm a third generation Rotarian, and I know pretty much that without foundation giving and support of the Paul Harris funds, that none of the work that we could do either locally or abroad would occur. Um, Baja Bridges is proud and honored to make Paul Wagner our national Paul Harris recipient this year from Baja Bridges, and I would like to present his Paul Harris to him. Paul, would you come up and let me pin you? So Paul doesn't know it now, but part of joining the Paul Harris Society or Paul Harris family means that he will start giving $1,000 a year through your club's field, because I also believe that you can give up that Starbucks coffee once a week and put it into something that's memorable. So I look forward to in nine years from now, seeing him wear this major donor pin and that he continues to be a great Rotarian. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. It is a great honor to be awarded a Paul Harris Fellow, and there's many in this room. And we're going to do it again for Paul with the actual award at the end of the year. And I want to thank Catherine here for helping get that done. So thank you. That's absolutely well deserved. You may not know Paul very well, but behind the scenes, he's doing an awful lot. And some of that is coming to fruition today. And so on to introducing our speaker. So Catherine Turner is the National Director of Baja Bridges, which is an organization de dedicated to repurposing older but very good American equipment for firefighting and ambulatory services in Mexico. And our club has spent, uh, helped donate two fire engines to uh, Mexico with her help in the last couple of years. And she will be speaking at PETS this weekend. Well, she'll be presenting in the vendor area of PETS uh, all about the program here that you see on this table, which our club helped her to pioneer along with other clubs. And she'll tell us more about that in her presentation. And I just would like to say that from the very day I met her, I could tell that she was a what I consider a super Rotarian. So let's please have a warm welcome for Catherine Turner. Hi, um, I apologize. I just got off a plane from Mexico where I spent 10 days touring down there. Um, Baja Bridges was a group that was started three years ago because a couple of Rotarians thought they'd like to go to Mexico in a fire engine. Well, all good projects start with we're having a beer or at the bar and we think it's a good idea, whatever we came up with. Fast forward three days later, we take a fire engine, we load it up with a bunch of fire equipment, we wave goodbye to our rotary clubs and our spouses and we go to Tijuana and we immediately go to jail. So it wasn't a good project. It was a disaster. <laughs> but what we learned was that a lot of Rotarians who wanted to come to Mexico had similar experiences. They had difficulty with customs. Um, they had difficulty with how to navigate getting into the country and or how to communicate with other Rotary clubs. Thus, we began Baja Bridges. 
Baja Bridges is a group of Americans from all over the Northern United States. The majority of our board members are Rotarians in different states and regions. And we got together and did a 501c3 so that when a Rotary Club wanted to work in Mexico, they had some um, assistance. Um, we have four areas of focus. Our main one was fire and EMT, mostly because our original members were all in the firefighting community. I have to say right off the bat, I'm not a firefighter other than looking at the calendar. That's my only interest in what those guys do. Oh, and if they put my house fire out, so I, not a firefighter. But the guys realized that fire and EMT was important. What we didn't realize was how much surplus equipment was thrown away every year in the United States or left in Econics. So the group got together and said, how can we take equipment like in Paul Wagner's Conix and Skagit and transfer that into a, a, a project where a Rotarian could take it down and, and give it to another firefighter. So the first project was PPE. That was bringing personal protective equipment, helmets, jackets, boots, and in the United States, it costs about $12,000 to dress a firefighter, to get them ready to go in to, to fight a fire. So by, by being able to bring this surplus equipment down, we quickly changed safety uh, for firefighters in Mexico. It, it gave them a chance. Once we got down and we did the PPE, we realized, well, they need the backpacks, the oxygen, they need the hand tools, um, they need water. So we added the next level, which was actual entry into buildings and fire engines. So that was year two. Year three, we realized, well, you can't just give somebody a fire engine and say, here you go, here's the keys, because like all good boys, and I do say that, they drive it crazy, they don't know what they're doing, and they have a tendency to break it. So we added it, oh, what does that mean? Stand back? Oh. Oh shoot, what a, where? Oh, hi there. All righty. So <laughs> I'm not good at speaking, so I apologize. So we realized that we needed to add training. So the next step of that was we developed three national training programs within Mexico. One of the things that we quickly realized is that if I, as a firefighter, were trying to teach you in English, when you're under stress in an emergency situation, you'll have a tendency not to be able to listen or understand. So we built a national firefighters training program called Bomberos Nueste. That's every fire department in Baja participates. Um, it's a train the trainer program. It's in conjunction with US um, firefighting academies. And now we have the most nationally recognized firefighters training program because of Rotary and zero dollar. And it was just truly matching the need with the resources and the skills. The next step of fire training was the EMT and medical. Um, a lot of Americans travel into Mexico and one of the biggest challenges is if I'm in a car accident, can you get me out of the car? If I have a heart attack, if I have a stroke, um, at COVID, we did a lot of work with COVID. So we developed an EMT medical training program and started bringing ambulances down. Uh, since that project was started, I think we're up to about 22 ambulances that have been purchased within the United States, but not only is the ambulance there, they got the training. They know how to take care of you. They've got English as a second language for their EMTs, um, which moves us into education. As we were traveling down, COVID hit three weeks after we got into Mexico, and it completely shut the door to NGOs coming in. Churches wouldn't come, Rotary Clubs wouldn't come, and we had realized that all these organizations that had worked hard to get into Mexico for the last 20 years suddenly had no, no way to deal with it. So Rotary stepped up, and that's where I met Paul Wagner. He had shown an interest of being at a home in Cabo and wanting to retire there someday. And we said, how could we continue to supply medical supplies? Um, what's the medicine you take when you're diabetic? Insulin. Suddenly there was no insulin in Baja there was a huge spike in amputations. So Rotarians were calling us and saying, as you're driving down the Baja, could you bring us insulin? Could you bring us needles? Could you bring us oximeters? Could you bring us oxygen? We realized, okay, we needed a transportation network. So what started out as just a fire and EMT project turned into a large transportation system. We now have eight warehouses across the Mexican border between San Diego and Texas. 
four major warehouses in all of the United States. And what I think is pretty great about it is we only spend about $20,000 a year for all of that. Most of it is warehouses that either a Rotarian has got a commercial space or um, R.L. Jones, which is a national shipping company, turns out their grandfather was a Rotarian. We realized that as Rotarians, when we talked to people about this need, that the resources were in our backyard and we didn't have to go out and raise a lot of money. Um, the three areas of focus, obviously fire and EMT. Well, while we were traveling down there, the orphanages um, during COVID suddenly became something we learned a lot about. Paul had the experience of doing a food trip. Most orphanages are dependent upon someone coming to the gate, leaving food at the door or water or other supplies for the kids. They don't have electricity in many cases. They don't have running water, but they have 25 or 30 children. So when Paul visited, we said, do you want to do a food trip? He went out and he got a truckload of food, which cost him about $150. Um, he bought candies and, and goodies and treats. But other Rotarians had donated a bicycle and some other little things. And he drove to an orphanage and he had a chance to spend a day with the kids. Now, that might not seem a lot to you or me, but seeing a human being outside of that one acre when you're locked in during COVID, it was the world. This was Santa. I mean, he showed up and he was getting hugs and, and they were showing him the puppies and the kittens. And for those kids, that social interaction that was only his time made a huge difference. So Baja Bridges has 24 orphanages now. Uh, one of the Rotarians just went to Loretto. Um, which one of you? He'll be able to speak to it. The Casa Hagar system is something that Baja Bridges supports. We support education for the kids. Once you go through eighth grade in Mexico, you don't stay in school. It's a, you must pay to go after that. So Rotary has developed English as a second language program. So Rotarians through Zoom and through the computers that we donate teach the kids English. We support the orphanages. We allow them to network with, if you're traveling and you wanna do a hands-on project, they have a needs list. So if there's somewhere in Mexico or Baja you'd like to travel to, we can tell you, hey, maybe they wanna build um, some more dormitories, or they just want to paint, or they've got a, they want a garden. A lot of the orphanages love to garden and have animals, so animal husbandry. And again, these are not things that cost a lot of money. They're just engaging your time and connecting. Um, the final thing that Baja Bridges is doing now that I'm really excited about is spreading the word of Rotary. Everywhere we go, we start a Rotary Club. I joined Baja Mar and Ensenada. This week, I chartered the new club in Santa Rosalia. So let's talk Santa Rosalia. You started that. Two years ago, you brought a fire engine down to that community. When we first came in, they had about 30 firefighters, volunteers that sort of knew what they were doing, but weren't really a team. Fast forward, they're being paid, which in Mexico, $350 a month may not seem like much to one of us, but that's a full-time job for a firefighter in Mexico. And it's the difference between he can go out and have some insurance. He can buy groceries. Go ahead, Carl. Did the flood hit right after you? It did. So right after you gave us a fire engine, the big hurricane came through and the dam in that town broke. But because they had training in rescue, they were ready. They were able to help. Sadly, another week later, that town caught on fire. And it was built by a bunch of French individuals that thought they were in San Francisco and delivered a church that was from France. It was all of wood. So this entire town is made out of wood. It's the exact same sort of structure that New Orleans had. Well, because they had your fire engine, your rescue engine, and the training that that community had taken through Baja Bridges, they were able to only lose two blocks of that town. Now, two blocks to you and I doesn't seem like a lot, but that's 50 families. That's eight businesses. That's um, a permanent house that's not going to be replaced by any FEMA program. Um, it, it was huge. So I, I kind of get a, I, I cry because I know that the difference that I made just by getting into a truck for a few hours did more than just look pretty with a sign on it. We saved some lives. Um, I'm going to end in a story because I really would like to have questions from you guys about Mexico. 
Two years ago, Paul helped us get our first round of SCBAs. SCBA is the air pack that you put on your back with the mask that you use to go into a fire. So we load these up, we drive, and I'm not in front of the camera again, getting the finger. <laughs> we get down to Mexico and we get over the border and we're giving these out to a fire department in Mexicali. The guys have gone through training. They've learned how to wear them and use them. And as we're handing them out and we're fitting each firefighter with his helmets and his boots, there's a lady, she's in the corner and she's crying. She's devastated. And I'm thinking, man, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited. This is awesome, right? We're, we gave them new fire equipment, but she's bawling. And she comes up to me finally and she lays her hands on me, which is a sort of traditional abuela thing to do. And she says, no more death, no mas muerda. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? No mas muerda. And I looked at her and I said, did you explain to me? And she goes, six weeks ago, my son died. We had a fire. And he thought that because he had his jacket and his hat and the boots that he had sent, that he could go in and he could rescue the kids caught in this house. Well, he didn't. He died. The kids died. And I realized that because I hadn't done my job well enough to get all of the equipment and the training that I could be causing problems. But she looked at me and then she smiled and she said, you've brought the training today and those used air tanks from Whatcom County, they all came from up north in Whatcom through John Crawford. And she says, now I will never have to bury another son because you got in a car. So I'm gonna leave you with, that's the impact that Rotary has. We have things that we don't think about or need or use, but when you put the community connections together and you allow Rotarians to work together, you save lives and you make a difference. And I wanna thank your club because you're our first major vehicle sponsor. Um, you did the road rescue rig, which will be instrumental in doing recoveries of accidents within the highway. Um, the equipment built a community, it built credibility for the firefighters, and it gave that town a chance. So thank you very much. If anybody would like to carry the boot, our saying is no firefighter should carry a boot to get a pair of boots. So anything you put in our boot drive today will get used for your community in Santa Rosalia for a, a Rotary grant. They're gonna build four new water pilas. We were chosen by Rotary International as the community to serve. And a lot of that really became possible because they saw what the greatest Rotary Club in the world and the universe in the stars and beyond started. So thank you very much. Oh, don't sit down yet. All right, before you sit, here's a pin that you can sign some deals with. Right on. Yeah. I have a gift for you, too. Oh. Um, one of the things that my family has is cancer. And, oh, sorry. So <laughs> one of the things that's been kind of personal to me is cancer and, and cancer prevention. And on behalf of the San Felipe Rotary Club, who has the new Women's Healthcare Cancer Center, um, we're doing this beautiful necklace that I'm gonna give her. And with the money we raised by selling the necklaces, we're buying a 3D imaging machine. Uh, we see at about 5,000 patients there. It's gonna be a Rotary International grant. So when we go to PETS this week, we'll be sharing it with other Rotary Clubs that they can join. But I wanna give you this piece of beautiful glass. I'll let everyone see it. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I think we need to put that video on our Facebook channel because I think we as a club, we know, oh, we've donated this and that. But when you hear the stories from the individuals and the difference it makes, that's why we have the auction. You know, that's why we raise these funds. So thank you very much for sharing that today. 
Ian, thank you for visiting with us. And if you need a booklet, they're over behind the wheel. There's also slips. If you haven't had time to grab one, please do. And with that, if you would help put away the table and chairs, this month's team is two people. So I know they would really appreciate the help. Thank you.